Good evening, and welcome to the 130th Kane Area High School Commencement Ceremony. In an effort to uphold the tradition and respect for these seniors and this ceremony, I ask that you please stay in your vehicles. Please do not turn on your headlights at any time that, as it will wash out the video above me on the screen. And please do not approach the stage as everything will be broadcast above me on the screen. Please do not honk your horns or yell as this will drown out what I am saying and the seniors may miss the cue to come on stage in the correct manner. Please do not approach the front of the stage to take pictures. We have a photographer over at my right that will be taking pictures and they will be made available to you for free. I thank you in advance for following these rules so we can provide the best ceremony possible for these students and your children. I now would like to introduce Kane Area School District Superintendent, Mr. Brock Benson. Thank you, Mr. Fitzlevich. I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate the class of 2020. Congratulations also to the parents family members, and friends to each of the graduates. This evening marks the culmination of many years of hard work, and while the last two months have been anything but normal, this in no way should overshadow your many accomplishments as students of Kane Area High School. Congratulations and best wishes to each one of you in your future endeavors. At this time, I'd like to introduce tonight's graduation speaker, Brandy Shemp, Brandy graduated from Kane Area High School in 2002. She then moved on to the Indiana University of Pennsylvania where she received a BA in marketing in 2006. She currently owns and operates Moose Ventures LLC, a commercial and residential rental company based in Kane. Brandy was elected mayor of Kane in 2017. and She has proven to be a tireless advocate for her hometown and has helped lead the revitalization efforts in the borough by encouraging both local and outside investment in the community. Brandy has also sought to improve the relationship between the community and law enforcement through programs such as Coffee with Cops, Nerf Wars for Children, and National Night Out. Brandy has displayed an eagerness to work with local, state, and federal elected officials in advocating for Kane and the surrounding area. She's an active member of the Pennsylvania State Association of Boroughs and contributes to both CARE and the Sparks groups. Brandy resides in Kane with her husband Lance and their three young children, Henry, Evelyn, and Sophia. Please welcome Brandy Shimp. Good evening. Or maybe good night is more appropriate. In either case, it's an absolute privilege to join you here tonight in a place that fosters so many memories, and I'm grateful to be a small part of it. Please join me in showing our appreciation to the administration, the teachers, the fire department, and the police, the Watts family, those who are streaming live for us tonight, and other volunteers who have worked so hard to put this special evening together. I know you're not allowed to honk your horns, but I know you appreciate it. So I've been working on this speech for some time now. In fact, I started writing it back in January and much has changed since then. So first, I'd just like to address the elephant in the room or maybe just the complete lack of a room. We're gonna touch on it because it has undoubtedly changed the course of things. But then we're gonna move on because quite frankly, I think it's taken enough of your senior year. One situation although very large, does not take away from the time, the effort, and the dedication you have given over the last 18 years. And after all, you are the reason that we're here tonight. While I cannot pretend to understand how it feels to graduate during a global pandemic, I can understand what it feels like to graduate at a time when the world as we know it changes in an instant. When I was a senior at Kane High 18 years ago, I very distinctly remember sitting in calculus class watching the South Tower fall. 
September 11th catapulted us into a world vastly different from September 10th. But long before the dust had time to settle, Americans had stepped up to the challenges before them and began to rise again. And for the class of 2002, well, we were tasked to go out and show the world that the future of America was in great hands and to do the next great things. And do you know who else was tasked that year? You. <coughs> you coming into this world during some of the darkest days in modern history created hope, created optimism, and created a peace among the chaos. And now, 18 years later, here you are. The same babies that cam came into this world when we needed hope the most are now setting out to do the next great things. You have, and always will be, synonymous with hope and a light among the darkness. The world is calling on you once again and I have no doubt that the class of 2020 will rise to this challenge. Now it's not to say it'll come easy, and the past several months have certainly been anything but easy, but this is where faith comes in, and you have to keep the faith. So this is the part of the speech where I'm gonna go back to my original semi-tweaked speech, because before you head out into the world, I wanted to share a couple of lessons that have really stuck out over the last 18 years since I was in your shoes. So here goes. Number one, there will be some tough times. And it is, without a doubt, okay to reach out and seek help. If you find yourself struggling, don't be afraid to reach out. For some reason, a stigma is attached when you're seeking out mental health help. But if you were to break your arm, the masses rally around you and offer to help. We offer to sign your cast and we cheer you on at physical therapy or we celebrate your progress and we encourage your recovery. And after healing, we still check in every once in a while to see how you're doing. Or how many of you here work out on a regular basis? You strive to keep yourself physically fit. You join gyms, you take spin classes, try different ways of eating, all in an effort to preserve your physical health. And your mental health should be no different. You don't have to be in the depths of despair or at the very lowest to want help either. Not only do you not need to hit rock bottom, you can still be doing pretty well and still want help. Remember the physical therapy for your broken arm to get stronger? Or remember training at the gym to be healthier? Why not seek out a therapy for your mind? And you'd be surprised to find out how many people around you seek out professional help, including myself. There have been challenging situations in my own life that prompted me to reach out for help navigating. And I carry absolutely no shame with that, and I don't think you should either. And maybe it's not professional help that you need. Perhaps it's something as simple as finding a hobby that gives you joy, just a pause from the daily grind. But whatever it is, just know that it's okay to reach out. Number two, understand the value of your dollar. As you sit here tonight, this may very well be the wealthiest you're gonna be for a while. Right now, many of you do not have mortgages, you don't have your student loans yet, car payments, much debt at all. You have a great opportunity to take control of your finances early in the game. Back when I was a freshman at IUP, I was walking home from class one day and I was approached by a kid outside of the pizza house with a clipboard asking me if I'd like a free pizza. And being a pretty broke college kid, I said, sure. So he handed me a form to fill out along with my free pizza. And a few weeks later, a shiny silver card showed up in the mail, my first credit card. And off I went to the Coney to buy lunch. If I had even remotely understood what the value of my dollar meant to me, I would have done things very differently. That free pizza, it's not free at all. When I look back on the interest that I paid on that credit card during my college and early career years, I cringe every time. So often you hear that time is money, and it's true. You will work so very hard for every single dollar you earn. Learn how much of your time it takes you to earn it. What did that dollar cost you to earn it? Time away from your family, time away from your friends. I wish that I would have figured out what my spending choices cost me, or more importantly, I wish I would have figured out how much of my time those choices had cost me. 
After graduating college and starting my career, the company I worked for offered great 401k match options and stock options. A good friend and coworker would constantly hound me to max out my 401k contribution and purchase the stock. And I would tell him I can't afford to do that. And he would always reply, you can't afford not to. In my world, I was paying a mortgage, a student loan, a car payment, the list goes on and on. And it still even included some of those payments from that shiny silver card. How could I afford to pay myself first? It was only after a few years I began to understand what he was talking about. In my early career years, I had never taken the time to fully learn about 401ks or 403bs, IRAs, stock options, compounding interest, and other key financial components. All things I wish I would have educated myself on. Money doesn't buy happiness, but understanding money can buy you power over your hard-earned dollars. So figure out what your value of a dollar is and use that knowledge to make spending and savings choices that are meaningful and worthwhile to you. Whether you're joining the workforce, attending college or a trade school, or joining the military, you have the power to control every dollar you earn. So understand and appreciate the value of your dollar. And finally, number three, turn they into we. So often people are quick to say, they should do this, they should do that, in reference to whatever the individual thinks needs done. And it's an easy thing to say, to have a thought and to voice it. I'm sure we're all a little guilty of it at one point or another, they should do this. But over the years, I've noticed that the ones quick to say they don't always get to see their ideas executed. It's the people who not only identify who they are, it's the ones who take it a step further and change they into we by sharing their thought and offering to help accomplish it. If you look around our thriving community, you will see so many individuals who have embraced the concept of we. For years, our citizens have worked very hard day in and day out to make our town what it is today. And now, during our town's renaissance period, more individuals have joined in that we movement, accomplishing much more together than we would ever apart. While some may say, they should clean up that empty lot, together, we can say, it's been turned into a public amphitheater in the middle of our uptown business district. While some may say, they should clean up this litter, together, all 600 of us can say, we joined one another and spent the day doing restoration and beautification projects during Care for Cain. And I know many, if not all of you sitting here tonight, have taken part in our Care for Cain event. Doesn't it give you a sense of pride to see what can be accomplished when they changes to we? Didn't it give you a sense of ownership in your community by actively working to improve it? By changing your thought process to we, you are not just placing the work on others, you are taking an active role in seeing the changes you desire. No matter what community you find yourself in, see how you can be a part of we. Sitting idle, telling others what needs done, accomplishes very little. But when you take action, no matter how large or small, you can help in seeing the changes you desire. Moving forward, try changing they to we and see what happens. And just one final thought before tonight's main event. I know this is not what you envisioned. I know this is not how you expected your commencement to go. But I just wanna tell you something. This isn't where it ends. In fact, this is just the beginning of something really special. From here on out, you're gonna be a Kane High graduate and forever part of the Wolf Pack. And that pack, our pack, well, our pack returns here every year on the fourth weekend in June to celebrate Kane's unofficial holiday known as Alumni Weekend. It's something very special and very unique and it doesn't happen in a lot of places, but it happens here. And I know this year will be a little different but if you know anything about the inspiration behind our school's mascot, the mighty Lobo Wolves, you'll know that they have already survived a near, ex near extinction, and so will we. Next year, we'll be back, stronger than ever, celebrating our memories from Kane High. So no matter where you go after tonight, I hope that you always remember the place and the people that have given you your roots and are now giving you your wings. 
Go out there and show this world what Kane High graduates are made of. No doubt you will make us all very proud. May God be with you on your journey. Congratulations to the Kane Area High School class of 2020 and hail to Old Kane High. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Shrimp. I'd like to now introduce our senior class president, Chad Graville. Thank you, Mr. Fitzlevich. So last year, when the new Avengers movie came out, someone spoiled it for me. I still went and saw it, but it was hard to appreciate because the entire time I was just waiting for Iron Man to die. When you know the end of a story, so much of the in-between is lost. Our senior year was spoiled before it began, in the sense that we spent it looking ahead to the ending we thought we were guaranteed. We witnessed that ending the first time in kindergarten, peeking out of our doors, watching the big kids walk down the hall in their caps and gowns. By the time we were seniors, it was so intoxicating that it was hard to slow down and smell the roses. March 13th was our last day as Kane High students and it was painfully ordinary. I'd be hard pressed to remember a single thing about it. The promise of a class trip, a big dance, and a school to yourself for at night make it easy to take days like March 13th for granted. If there's a lesson here, it's to stop and smell the roses. Don't take those days for granted because as we now know, nothing is guaranteed. The coronavirus has taken from us, but there's a silver lining. It gave us the unprecedented opportunity to write our own ending. Kane won't be forgetting this anytime soon because this graduation is a testament to our togetherness. It's proof of our resilience as a community. And I think I, think I speak for all the seniors when I say how overwhelmed we are with everyone's support. If it takes a village to raise a child, then children to come are in good hands. The Main Street displays for the class of 2020 warm our hearts. Being able to graduate in person, not through a screen, means more than you know. So thank you, Kane Family Drive-In, and everyone that helped make this possible. This is what we need, to be celebrating the past 12 years, not mourning the past two months. In 12 long years, we grew up. Everyone learned, everyone belonged, and everyone's presence was felt. While I'll miss all of you, I'm excited that the world may discover what we've known for a long time, that this is a very special group of people, we're the bright future for our bleeding nation, and we earned this hero's ending that we wrote for ourselves. Riding down Route 6 into the sunset, six feet apart, but closer than ever before. So in the spirit of brotherly love, and with the approval of the school board, we've decided to donate a new picnic table and apple tree to be planted in the high school courtyard. We hope we'll add to an environment that future seniors can enjoy together. Thank you, and hail to old Kate High. Thank you, Chad, and the class of 2020. I think that's a great gift. Kids are gonna enjoy it for a long time and it'll add beauty to the uh, school. Just a couple words here. When I step up here tonight, what goes through my mind is who to thunk. When, when we started school in August, everything seemed normal. And if there's one thing I would hope maybe we've all learned, not just the class of 2020, is that different doesn't have to be wrong or bad. Different can be very special, because I think that's what we're seeing tonight. And I would ask if, if and when we get back to a place that we can hug someone, I would ask that the seniors and the, their parents who have done such a great job in the last two months, find time to find Mr. Benson, and Mr. Frizlevich and Mr. Israel and Mr. Nicholas and Mrs. Lewis and give them the biggest hug because this is a wonderful thing that they have done for you tonight. And I hope you realize you have the most special commencement that has ever taken place in the 130 years. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Mrs. Buckley. <clears throat> now at this time, I ask all seniors to exit their vehicles with your numbered placard 
and move to the corresponding numbered stake on the side of the drive-in closest to Route 6, which would be on the right side over here. There will be volunteers in that area helping you find your spot in the lineup. We will give you about five minutes. There will be a video presentation during this time. Hi class of 2020. Hi class of 2020. Hey seniors. Hi class of 2020. Hey class of 2020. Hey class of 2020. Hi seniors. Hi class of 2020. Hey class of 2020. Love you seniors. <laughs> we love you seniors. We love you seniors. We love you seniors.
At this time, we are going to recognize those students who have achieved scholastic honors. This would be our ranking, our honor students and our National Honor Society students. There are two students in the class of 2020 who have attained a perfect 4-0 or above. These two students are designated as the ranking two. I will read their names, their parents' names, and postgraduate plans to include further education or training and degree or certification goal. The, the ranking two students are Brennan Michael Smith, honors course of study. His parents are Nathan and Michelle Smith. Brennan will be attending Bucknell University and he will be majoring in civil engineering. Chad Gr Joseph Graville, honors course of study. Parents are Dick and Lisa Liza Graville. He will be attending the University of Rochester, majoring in political science and also pursuing a minor in legal studies. Along with these two students, we also recognize the students that have attained the highest grade point average in the academic and vocational tracks. Mackenzie Lee Shrub, academic course of study. Parents T Tim and Katrina Shrub. She'll be attending the she will be attending Edinburgh University and she'll be majoring in elementary education and special education. Robert David Peterson, vocational track of study. Parents are David and Melissa Peterson. He will be attending Alfred State University and he will be pursuing an associate's degree in heavy equipment operation. These two students along with the two ranking students are known as our Honor Four. Congratulations. Now I would like to recognize the members of the National Honor Society. These students will be broadcast on the screen above me as I call their names. Brendan Smith, Sierra Hillman, Emily Peterson, Rachel Buell, Emily Buhite, Chad Graville, John Wolfe, and Hunter Hogue. By the virtue of the authority vested in me as the high school principal, I declare you to be permanent members of the National Honor Society. Congratulations. Now I'll move to the certification of graduates. The class of 2020, as a group and as individuals, you have developed a distinctive character that I will remember for many years to come. During your four years at Kane High School, you have achieved academically and athletically. You have been involved in many worthwhile activities in school and outside of school, and you have grown socially and emotionally. It is my hope that you take the lessons you have learned these past four years and apply them to your future endeavors. Your potential for success is unlimited. I wish you the best of luck in the pursuit of your dreams, and I look forward to seeing where life takes you in years to come. Now for the presentation of diplomas. Along with diplomas, I will announce scholarships and awards received by students. I again ask that everyone please stay in your vehicles. Please do not turn on your headlights, as it will wash out the live video that's broadcast. Please focus on the screen and not the stage, as everything will be broadcast on the screen above. Please do not honk your horns as, or yell, as this will drown out what I'm trying to say, and the seniors may miss the cue to come on stage. I request your cooperation in giving this ceremony, and more importantly, our seniors, your children, the respect they deserve, and provide them the opportunity for all of our graduates to be appropriately recognized. Thank you for your cooperation. 
Mrs. President, having met all the requirements established by the state of Pennsylvania and the Kane Board of Education, it is with pride and pleasure that I will now begin to present for the reception of their diplomas the class of 2020. Brennan Michael Smith, recipient of Howard M. Daisy W. and Gail Cleveland Scholarship, Mary Dutter Scholarship, Kane Eagles Helen Lathrop Scholarship, and the School Store Award. Chad Joseph Graville. Big 30 Senior Classic Scholarship, Howard M. Daisy, and Gail Cleveland Scholarship, Jared Costanzo Memorial Scholarship, Kane Eagles Helen Lathrop Scholarship, Mary Dutter Scholarship, Kane Lions Club Award, and School Store Award. Mackenzie Lee Shrub, Howard M. Daisy and Gail Cleveland Scholarship, Mary Dutter Scholarship, Kane Eagles Helen Lathrop Scholarship, Kane Music Boosters Award, Kane Rotary Scholarship, Steve German Memorial Scholarship, Robert David Peterson, Kane Music Award Boosters Award, Emil Zuzik Vocational Agricultural Award, Jacob Ray Alcorn, Pasture Craig Smith Memorial Scholarship, Ethan Gunner Anderson. Rayanne Marie Asel, Nathan Ryan Asp, Janine Marie Bean. Thomas William Bernicki, Blue Stars Mother of Kinzua Award, James Uber American Legion Post 489 Award, Staff Sergeant Kenneth Van Giesen Patriot Award recipient, Tyler Scott Bernicki, recipient of the Blue Stars Mother of Kinzua Award, James Uber American Legion Post 489 Award and Staff Sergeant Kenneth Van Giesen Patriot Award. Emily Marie Buheit, Howard M. Daisy W. and Gail Cleveland Scholarship, Mary Dutter Scholarship, Charlene Weezer Coder Scholarship. Kane Day School Award, Pat Santilli Memorial Teaching Award, and Sashi and Gladys Kane Scholarship. Rachel Nicole Buell, Howard M. Daisy W. and Gail Cleveland Scholarship, Mary Dutter Scholarship, Kane Eagles Helen Lathrop Scholarship. Elizabeth Ann Regal Memorial Art Scholarship, KAEA PTO Scholarship, Kane Elks Lodge 329 Scholarship, John and Donna M. Ewing's Memorial Scholarship, Michael Joseph Bundy III,
Kristen Andrew Carney. Courtney Lynn Causer, recipient of the School Store Award. Madison Marie Cressley. Samantha Katrina Lee Curcio. Rachel Renee Danielson, recipient of the Jarrett Costanzo Memorial Scholarship, the Kane Eagles Helen Lathrop Scholarship, Mary Dutter Scholarship, Gentleman Family STEM Scholarship, Paul Robert and Frida Roberta Calkins Rolf Scholarship, Raiden James Doherty, Recipient of the Bernie and Toby Cohn Memorial Award. Kelly Lynn Esrich. Kendra Farnsworth. Mason Allen Feichels. Andrew Martin Gear, recipient of the Kane Eagles Helen Lathrop Scholarship, Mary Duller Dutter Scholarship, Kane Area High School Alumni Memorial Award. James Robert Green, Kayla Marie Grimm. Anna Madeline Elizabeth Gullifer, recipient of the John and Donna M. Eulings Memorial Scholarship and the Jeff and Shelley Johnson Memorial Scholarship. Damian Michael Haight, Victoria Marie Hallberg. Recipient of the Kane Eagles Helen Lathrop Scholarship. Cassandra Dawn Jean Hepler. Lane Edward Hillard. Sierra Elizabeth Hillman. Recipient of the Howard M. Daisy W. and Gail Cleveland Scholarship, Mary Dutter Scholarship, Steve German Memorial Scholarship, and the Kane Lions Club Award. Zachary Tyler Hillier. Kennedy May Himes. Recipient of the School Store Award. Hunter Allen Hoag, recipient of the Kane Eagles Helen Lathrop Scholarship, Mary Dutter Scholarship, Kane Music Boosters Award, Sassy Gladys Kane Scholarship, and the Claude A. and Eleanor A. Olson Memorial Scholarship. Caleb Eric Holt. Aaron Christopher Hoddle. Zachary Ryan Howe. Jacob Al Joe Jensen. Recipient of the Blue Stars Mother of Kinzo Award the James Uber American Legion Post 489 Award, Staff Sergeant v Kenneth Van Giesen Patriot Award, Kane Music Boosters Award, and the KAEA PTO Scholarship. 
Heidi Elaine Johnson. Kaylin Wells Johnson, recipient of the Howard M. Daisy W. and Gail Cleveland Scholarship, Mary Dutter Scholarship, Kane Eagles Helen Lathrop Scholarship, Beta Sigma Phi Scholarship, and the Becky Mary Memorial Scholarship. Riley Ann Johnson. Emily Renee Kelly. Mackenzie Marie Kleiber. Abigail Rose Langill, recipient of the School Store Award and the Richard and Margaret Caruso Scholarship. Jordan Daniel Lima Lopez. Donovan Kendall Mack. Austin Samuel Mitchell. Jacob John Moore. Hannah Michelle Nelson. Lexi Marie Novacell, recipient of the Carrie B. Sowers Memorial Scholarship and the Kane Lutheran Home Nurses Award. Alyssa Ray Oaks. Ian Connor O'Hara, recipient of the Blue Stars Mother of Kinzua Award, James Uber American Legion Post 49 Award, and Staff Sergeant Kenneth Van Giesen Patriot Award. Dominic Charles O'Rourke III, Allison Page Papasergi. Emily Grace Peterson, recipient of the Kane Eagles Helen Lathrop Scholarship, Mary Dutter Scholarship, and the Gentleman Family Scholarship. Kieran Ezra Parati, Theodore Michael Race, recipient of the Joe Stanko Memorial Scholarship. Zandra Eloise Romando. Anna Elizabeth Robbins, recipient of the Statewide Tax Recovery Scholarship and the School Store Award. Ainsley Ann Saff. <coughs> Kane Lutheran Home Nurses Award. Kane Eagles Helen Lathrop Scholarship, Mary Dutter Scholarship, Jared Costanzo Memorial Scholarship, Dr. Thomas L. Kane Fund, Harold Carter Scholarship Fund, Phoenix Chapter 15, and the Mike Mix Memorial Scholarship. Kevin David Sharba. Recipient of the Horn Family Memorial Scholarship. Aaron James Shellhammer. Recipient of the Statewide Tax Recovery Scholarship and the Kane Area Citizenship Award. Brandon Lee Severance. Kyle Scott Shea, Christopher Paul Stewart, recipient 
of the Ludlow Fire Department Scholarship in memory of Tristan Sowers, Scott M. Hickey Memorial Scholarship, Tristan Sowers Memorial Scholarship, and Odd Fellows Home of Western PA Citizenship Award. Daniel Alexis Swanson, recipient of the Diana J. Eulings Memorial Scholarship. Haley Nicole Swanson. Paige Emily Thomas. Chase Forrester Umpleby. Joseph Christopher Walters, recipient of the Kane Elks Lodge 329 Vocational Scholarship. Benjamin Richard Westerberg, recipient of the Blue Stars Mother of Kinzua Award, the James Uber American Legion Post 489 Award, and Staff Sergeant Kenneth Van Giesen Patriot Award. John Stephen Wolf, recipient of the Kane Rotary Scholarship, Beta Sigma Phi Scholarship, Ian Skippy McCluskey Memorial Scholarship, Jarrett Costanzo Memorial Scholarship, Jeff and Shelley Johnson Memorial Scholarship, Philip J. Imbrogno Memorial Scholarship, Sergeant Jeffrey A. Palmer Memorial Scholarship, Kane High School Alumni Memorial Award, and the Mary Dutter Scholarship. Alexandra Margaret Yajurk. Caitlin Abigail Young. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present to you the Kane Area High School Class of 2020. Graduates, you may now turn your tassels. <coughs> I expected more horns. At this time, join us for the singing of our alma mater. Okay, we don't want you to leave yet. Now just stay right where you're at. Don't leave yet. What's that, Mr. Nicholas? You said we have what? Oh, I need everybody to step out of their cars at this time. Step out of your cars, and I want you to turn and look past the snack bar opposite 
the screen, we have something very special for you. Very special. Wait for it. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go So make the best of this test and don't ask why It's not a question but a lesson learned in time It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life So take the photographs and still frames in your mind Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life But in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life It's something unpredictable But in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life
If tomorrow all the things were gone, I'd work for all my life, and I had to start again with just my children and my wife. I'd thank my lucky stars to be living here today, 'cause the flag still stands for freedom, and they can't take that away. I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. 'Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA.
Hello. Welcome to this year's version of Project Graduation. I'm not sure how we're going to follow that fireworks display, but we'll do the best we can. My name is Tammy Johnson, and this is Jesse Bond. We're here as committee members representing Project Graduation. The overnight party has become a long-standing cane tradition on graduation night. It has provided not only a safe place for our kids to celebrate the evening, but has also given them so many wonderful memories and gifts to take away. Obviously, we can't provide the party this year, but we were determined to make sure the class of 2020 got to experience at least some of what Project Graduation has to offer. We set to work collecting signatures by mail in an effort to make the traditional autographed class t-shirts a reality. We received 66 signatures. The missing nine names were added using a handwritten computer font. We ended up with a complete autographed keepsake shirt for our graduates to take home tonight. In addition, in true Kane community fashion, our local businesses and citizens overwhelmingly answered our call to help make tonight special. Between money and merchandise, we received well over $6,000 in donations. That's about $1,500 more than an average year. What makes it even better is that because we don't have all the expenses associated with throwing an all-night party for 75 kids, 100% of these donations is being given directly to the graduates tonight. In a few minutes, I'm going to invite the seniors to visit the concession stand. Please enter through the doors located closest to Route 6. Inside, you will find 75 individually bundled door prizes that we have pre-drawn and labeled with your names. Please know we've done our very best to divide items into bundles in a way that makes them all comparatively equal in value. Once we had our bundles, we randomly drew names for each one. By doing this, it really became just luck of the draw to determine who gets each individual item, just like a traditional door prize drawing. After all of that, we went back through and added your class t-shirts to the bundles according to the sizes you indicated you needed. If you didn't send your signature in, you're still getting a shirt tonight. We ordered a size large, and we hope that works for you. Before I let you go see what you won, I just want to close the night in the traditional project graduation way, by doing a live drawing for our five grand prizes. These prizes alone are worth over $1,000, with the final one being $500 cash. If I call your name, Please come to the stage and receive your item and return to your vehicle. The first one we have is a digital camera. Dominic O'Rourke. Are you coming, Dominic? <laughs> While we wait, um, the next gift is a 10-inch core tablet with keyboard and case. For Chad Graville. We have a 39-inch LED television for John Wolf.
we have a 43-inch Roku Smart TV. The Roku TV goes to Benjamin Westerberg. <laughs> and the $500 cash prize goes to Zachary Hillier. I just want to say thank you to everybody for making tonight happen, and thank you so much for allowing us a few moments to give the class of 2020 at least a small part of the project graduation experience. Congratulations to all of our graduates, and don't forget to stop by the concession stand to grab your prizes. Have a good night.